what's up you guys and welcome back to my channel if you're new please subscribe because this is where you want to be if you want to learn anything about making t-shirts learning anything about vinyl anything about the heat press all things t-shirts right here at Austin's Labs so today I'm going to be teaching you guys how to sublimate I had to write some notes down just because I get off track but anyway, so yeah, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to sublimate. I'm going to take you step by step, A through Z, all the materials you're going to need, and how to get it done. Okay, so I gathered up all the materials that you're going to need, just so I can run through them really quick before I um, start on the project. Okay, so first off, your t-shirt. Okay, you're going to need a... 100% polyester. If not 100%, um, it needs to be a high percentage percent of polyester because the sublimation ink will not adhere to um, cotton and other uh, fabrics. Polyester is what it adheres to. And the less of the polyester, polyester, the less of the polyester fabric the less the ink will adhere. So you're gonna get, say for instance, if you have a 50-50 blend, um, it will adhere, but it'll look more like a vintage style shirt. If you know what that looks like, it's kind of like a less saturated, um, less saturated image. Okay, so this one I actually bought from, I think I got this from um, Hobby Lobby. I do not remember actually. But this, I think I got this from Hobby Lobby. This is a, this one is actually a, let me take this off of here first. Hold it up there. This is act, actually a 95, 95% polyester and 5% spandex. So this is gonna adhere quite nicely. The color should be a, should be able to pop really nicely on this shirt, and it's actually kind of thick. I have some other ones um, that are 100% polyester, but they aren't as heavy as this one is. Um, they feel quite the same, but this one feels like it, it's a little bit heavier or it might be a little bit thicker. I'm not sure, but yeah, but we're gonna use this one today. Okay, so. You got your polyester. Now, um, what else you're gonna need? You're gonna need to have a sublimation printer, okay? I have a Epson 2760, which is not a sublimation printer. However, I converted it to a sublimation printer. Um, and how I did that is, okay, so the Epson printer came with this ink right here. I use, as you can see, it's not even open because I haven't, I did not use it. So it comes with this right here. And at the top of these, um, at the top of these uh, ink cartridge or ink bottles, there's like a key. I forgot what they call it. Um, it's like a key shaped top that you just stick onto the Epson printer and it um, drops the ink down into the tank. So, with that being said, I bought from Cosmos Ink, this is not, <laughs> of course this is not promoted, but this is Cosmos Ink, it is a black owned company um, and they sell sublimation ink. And what makes it even greater is that their inks have the exact same top so that all you have to do is pop it on there and let the ink drain into the tank so yeah so if you got your you got a printer a sublimation printer or you have an Epson printer that you want to convert either or works great the only problem with purchasing a um, Epson printer and converting it is that your warranty will no longer be void well, your warranty will be void um, because it's not made for it's. They didn't they didn't make that printer for that purpose. So by you not putting 
their ink inside of it is you basically um, um, uh, voided out your, your warranty with the company and so you can't call them for any help as far as like if something goes wrong you cannot call them they cannot help you so it's, it's you know, I mean you're taking a you're taking a chance by doing that but um, it's worth it in my opinion because the sawgrass printers that are made for uh, sublimation are quite expensive um, but it's, I mean, it's, it's up to you. It's up to your budget. It's up to what you want to do. So if you want to buy a sawgrass, it's completely up to you. Um, you're going to spend a little bit more money. However, it's worth it. You have a warranty, um, on those printers. But with this one, I think I only spent maybe $300 to something, $300. Um, and it prints up to eight and a half by 11 and also eight and a half by 14 get into that the paper that you need for your sublimation okay so this right here excuse me i don't know what's happening this right here is my sublimit the sublimation paper i use most often is the a sub um it works perfect i have have not had any issues with this this is the eight and a half by 11 and then i wanted to purchase some um um a little bit larger which is the eight and a half or well, eight yeah, eight and a half by 14 and this is by text print and there is a way to make larger prints with your eight and a half by 11 as well all you have to do is just cut your image up and then on your software and then uh, tape it all together once you print it out to make it um, larger okay so that's it so we have our t-shirt so far our sublimation printer and I've explained the inks and um, everything your sublimation paper and also you want to make sure you have some heat transfer tape I mean some heat um, some heat tape because when you put your image onto your garment you want to make sure that it is stable so that you don't get any ghosting any movement or anything like that when you go to press it and pull it up so you this is a must you need to have some um, heat tape also, lovely old lint roll. You need to have a lint roll. This is a must or you will ruin your t-shirts. I have done it a few times, a few times too many if you ask me. Just because sometimes I forget because when you're doing cotton, sometimes you don't have to, you know, you don't have to lint roll it because it's, I mean, it's cotton. It's, it's not gonna, it's not gonna do anything. But with sublimation and polyester shirts, I am not sure why this happens, but if you do not lint roll your shirts, you will have all of these blue specks from whatever type of, um, from whatever type of lint that's on your shirt, it will leave a blue speck on your shirt. And I can tell you, when I first started doing this, I, it frustrated me so bad because I didn't understand. I was like, why is why do I keep getting this blue stuff on my shirt? Like, what am I doing wrong? I thought it maybe was the paper. I'm like, it's something on the paper. It's something on my, um, on the butcher paper. It's what, like, what was going on? I could not figure it out until I did a little bit more research. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> I should have known that. But yeah, so you want to make sure you lint roll that shirt really well or you will have that issue and trust me you will have that issue i don't care what you i don't care if you look at the shirt and you're like it's nothing on the shirt when you press that shirt and lift that press up you're gonna be upset because it's gonna be on there i'm trying to tell you mention butcher paper you're gonna need butcher paper right here um when i ran out of butcher paper i use printer paper it works the same however you, i mean you can get this um in a bulk size and it's much larger than regular printer paper but you're going to need some butcher paper because you have to put butcher paper in between your garment and on top of your garment so that the ink does not bleed through your shirt or onto your top platen on your um on your heat press okay so this is a must as well pretty much everything i'm telling you it, it, it's a must you need you need this stuff in order to get um a, a good a good uh outcome on your garment okay 
Okay, so let me show you what you need to do in order to get started with your image. Okay, so what I did was <clears throat> I ordered a lot of images off of Etsy for the simple fact that I just didn't have time to make my own. I wanted to be able to get ahead um, of this holiday so that I can get the images printed and sold. Um, usually I'm behind on that kind of stuff because I'm trying to figure out um, uh, designs and things like that. And then by the time I get it all together and start promoting it, it's almost a holiday. So, and I don't, I end up not being able to get much sold because um, I waited too late. So this time I was like, I'm not doing that. I'm just going to go and find me some, in some images and make some mock-ups. And then we're going to, we're going to go that route instead, which is, was a lot easier for me so um as you can see these are a lot of the designs um that i have already purchased um from etsy and i was going for something for myself um so i think i want to try this one right here i think i want to change the flag maybe to a color or something instead of the um, actual print or the flag. So let's go ahead and open that up so I can show you guys. <clears throat> and I use um, a, Adobe Illustrator. Um, there are other programs that you can use. Um, I actually, I think I found, I wrote some down, what was it? Um, Design Space for Cricut and also Canva. I'm not that familiar with uh, I'm not that familiar with Canva uh, and how to how it works as far as uh, as far as uh, this was a lot. Look how large that was. That was huge. As far as how how Canva, Canva works, but I know that you can um, design and print and all that kind of stuff in there. But don't quote me on how it actually works because I don't know. And also, um, uh, of course, design space for the Cricut. Um, you can you can do it on there as well. But I personally use uh, Illustrator or I use Photoshop because that's what I'm more familiar with. Um, uh, because I went to school and I uh, went to school for uh, graphic arts and that's why I learned um, how to use these programs. So anyway, here we go. This, I really like this image actually. I'm wondering if I want to change the flag though. I'm wondering if I want to change the flag. And I think I do. And this is a PNG file. I think I pulled the wrong one. So let's go back and get the SVG file if I if I have that one. Uh, I do. So let's go ahead and open that instead so that I can make some changes to it without having to image trace it. And I um, in another video, um, if you're interested, I will show you how to change to do to work image uh, trace and to convert it so that you can use it as a uh, vector file or an SVG file, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and close that, that PNG file out just because I want to manipulate it and I don't wanna have to go through all of those steps um, to do that. So let's go ahead and work on this guy here. We're gonna... Make it a little larger so I can see it better. Okay. All right. So I'm thinking, let's ungroup that. I'm thinking I want to change the bow.
get my printer on because I didn't even turn it on yet. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it on again. This is the Epson <clears throat> 2760. And as you see, this is an Eco Tank. Eco Tank. And I've had this printer for over a year and I have not had to change the ink yet. So it is very, it works very, it's good for its money, in my opinion. I have not, but this uh, can in here, this, this home can in here, I've had to change the ink on that already a couple times. Okay, so now that we have the printer on, and before we print, I just want to go ahead and show you your settings. Let's go ahead and turn that on. Okay, and we're going to, actually it was already set because I did some last night. Um, the seconds, you want to put your seconds at 60 seconds. Let me turn this around. Okay, you want to make sure that your seconds is at 60 seconds. And then you want to make sure that your heat is at 400. I um, have started putting at 405 simply because sometimes the um, heat press, it will fluctuate. So I just put it at 405 just to be on the safe side. Um, and then we're just going to let that heat up. Okay, and this is my heat press here at the top I have a um, Teflon sheet that I clipped on here just so that I don't have to keep pulling out a Teflon sheet every time I want to um, press so this makes it very easy for me um, by putting it on top there like that and I also wanted to sh tell you too last night I forgot to put the butcher paper on the top of my thing and as you can see how some of the ink bled through there so today when I print I'm gonna make sure that I put butcher paper on there so that it does not get onto my shirt okay Okay guys, now that we have our image right here, have our image cut out and paste it together, now we're going to go ahead and set up for print. Um, like before, I told you that our print setting is at 4.05 and the seconds is 60 seconds. This is at a very high temp. I'm going to go ahead and pull that back. And as you can see, what I was saying before, how it got onto the top Teflon sheet, you can see a little bit of it on this butcher paper. Okay, and this is really hot, so be careful. And we're going to go ahead and pull off 
our image. And look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Look at those colors. Okay, you guys, so here is the teacher on. As you can see, the color is nice and vibrant. Um, I should have turned my camera around so it would show the right way, but you get the point. This is it right here. The color, let's pull it out so you can get a good look at it. The color is pretty nice. It looks pretty good to me. Okay, um, I do see right here, this is where my paper overlapped, which is my own fault, because um, normally I do not overlap it. I just paste it together like that. But nevertheless, I told you this is my own t-shirt. On, on a client, I would not do that. I would make sure that, you know, it's lined up perfectly so that we don't have any lighter areas like that. But yeah, this is... This is the image and it came out very nice. Um, I'm, uh, this, is, this is nice to me. I'm good with this. So yeah. Um, and again, this, this will not wash off. This will last as long as the shirt lasts. Um, again, this will not wash off. The, the ink will stay in the shirt as long as this shirt is a shirt. It's not going anywhere. It's going to stay on here. It's, it's embedded into this, the fibers of the t-shirt. So you do not have to worry about it fading away when you wash it or anything like that. Um, again, sublimation is perfect for if you have um, a lot of colors that you don't want to layer up with vinyl. Um, or something that's quite intricate that also has a lot of colors or even if you just don't feel like using vinyl um, and you want to just do it the easy way because this is very easy you don't have to weed anything um, all you have to do is print your image out and press it onto your shirt um, but yes yeah, so I'm gonna go back over the items you're gonna need again so first of all you need 100% polyester or a higher grade um, polyester I wouldn't say nothing less than 60% but again if you want to go for like a vintage look you can go for a lower percentage but um, I would prefer you use either 90% from 90 to 100% polyester because you're going, your colors are going to pop and it's going to last a lot longer as far as the, the vibrance of your t-shirt um, so yeah 100% polyester shirts uh, also, you want to make sure you have your sublimation paper. You can purchase that. I've, I've seen some on Amazon. I think I, pers I personally purchased mine from Amazon. Um, I looked at a few YouTube channels to see which uh, sublimation paper was the best or a lot of people was, was using and, and um, had good things to say about so ASUB was one of those uh, sublimation one of those brands so that's the purchase the one that I purchased um, I don't remember I know I saw text print on someone else showed me text print I don't remember who it was I'm sorry but um, this I will once I figure out where I purchased this from I will put the link um, down below for the text print which is the eight and a half by 14 also also, your ink, where I purchased my ink, I purchased my ink from Cosmos Ink. This is a black owned company. So <coughs> again, uh, that Eco Tank works rather, very well with this uh, Cosmos Ink. Okay, so we got our paper, we got our printer, we got our ink, we have our heat press. Um, that's another thing. I didn't mention that, but I assume that you guys know you probably will need, I mean, I'm going to say probably, but you need a heat press. If you want to have the best results, you need to have a heat press because you can adjust your pressure and you can also get higher temperatures on your heat press. I would not suggest using an iron or anything like that because the iron does not get that hot. 
and also an iron does not press the entire image at one time and you want to make sure that you're pressing the entire image at one time because then you will end up with light and dark areas kind of like this right here okay and you do not want that when you're um selling it to a customer that's just bad business you do not want to have you know it all messed up like that with all these light and dark colors so i would really suggest that you use a heat press for this um also you want to make sure you have some type of graphic software to manipulate your manipulate your image if need be um if you don't i mean if you fi just find an image and you want to print it that way i guess you could um just pull the image up and maybe your uh, Windows software or something like that and just print it out, but make sure that it's mirrored. But I, I would prefer using a graphic software so that I can make any changes to it that I see fit or, you know what I'm saying, um, just just be able to manipulate it the way I would like for it to be manipulated, like I ended up doing for this image right here. Okay, so um, you're going to need heat transfer tape. Um, we discussed that in the lint roller. <laughs> and um, also you saw I almost did it again. And I've, I've done this so many times. I don't know why I, I end up skipping this step. But you have to lint roll. 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 Because you, are, you will mess up your shirt. You will have those little blue specks. You will have those little blue specks on your shirt. And it's gonna it's gonna mess you <laughs> it's gonna mess you up. It takes up it takes time and it takes money. You know, making mistakes like that. So you want a lint roll. Um, and I think that's all. I think that's all. If I'm missing anything, feel free to comment down below. But I am so glad I was able to show you guys this because um, when I first started doing this, I, it was hard for me to find uh, videos. Uh, specific videos on sublimation or just anything regarding making t-shirts um, a lot of the people who did it they they kind of explained it in a way as if you already knew so um, that's why I wanted to make this to make sure that I explain it in a way that for people who are starting out or trying to learn will be able to grasp the grasp the information and um, learn from it you know and take that take that information away and and use it for themselves okay so again I am very glad that I was able to do this guy do this for you guys um, next video I'm not really sure exactly what my plans are for the next video I guess I could show you how to um, purchase the Etsy files because I didn't go into depth with that I just explained to you that I bought those from Etsy but um, I guess I could do something like that and maybe show you how to um, convert files into SVG files to be cut and also separating the colors and things like that so that when you go to pull it into Cricut um, Design Place, uh, Design Space, you'll be able to cut, I mean, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, separate the images by the color so that when you get ready to cut, it'll you all have, you have all your colors separated and ready to go. So I guess I could do something like that, show you from step to step how to uh, purchase your images and um, turn them into SVG files to be cut. So yeah, if you have any other ideas or anything you would like to see or have me discuss, just put it down below in the comments. And again, this is the place to be if you're trying to learn how to decorate t-shirts you want to learn about certain vinyls you want to learn about the t-shirt business in general this is the place to be so if you're new i appreciate it. if you would go ahead and subscribe push that button uh if you're returning push that like button and i will see you guys next video peace out